raspberry lemonade from Aldi. Raspberry lemonade from Aldi. Well, uh, we've covered a lot of bases this evening. I did want to ask you about your uh, your martial training because uh, I know you trained out in uh, California with Judo Gene and Gokor, whose last name I can never say, but uh, I'm sure with his, uh, I remember back in the, yes, back in the days of Black Belt Magazine and Kung Fu Magazine and all that stuff, he would always pop up as um, competing in these tournaments and just blowing guys out. Somewhere around here, I've got a, a copy so of Judo Black Gene. Belt Magazine with uh, Gokor on it, tossing Manny Gamburian around. And a lot of people might only know Manny from uh, he almost won the Ultimate Fighter and he lost because he popped his shoulder out fighting Nate Diaz. And then he was a big training partner with Ronda Rousey and part of Ronda's camp. Because Ronda was part of, you know, she started, you know, with Gokor and Are you waiting for me to tell more stories? Yeah, I knew she'd worked with Judo Gene for a while. Now, there's a guy who's uh, just walking, walking, talking history right there from the days of uh, working with Bruce Lee on uh, the Green Hornet all the way up to uh, doing stunts on Married with Children. I mean, he he saw it all. Gene really did. Uh, I was actually working on a tell-all book for Gene. And it was going to be called Gene the Bell Stories. And the thing about Gene was he wasn't very braggadocious. Gene did not like to sing his own praises, right? And he was a rough, tough motherfucker. And that guy, oh, my God, you don't even know. You don't even freaking know. He was a pro wrestler. Uh, his mother, uh, he grew up with wrestlers, professional wrestlers at the Olympic Auditorium in Los Angeles. His mom ran the Olympic Auditorium. And so Gene's father really wasn't around. And so he grew up with all that, that kind of culture of, of wrestling and Gokor, he's from Armenia and Gokor was an Armenian judo champion that our government literally stole from the Soviet judo team in the eighties and brought him out here. And Gokor is an actual, uh, that he's known as a, uh, certain countries have what's known as a living national treasure. And Gokor is an actual living national treasure of Armenia. And amazing judo player, amazing uh, amazing guy. Like, Gokor is something else. And so his thing is sambo and judo and jujitsu. Because at it, it, Gene the Bell and Gokor's, it's like, whatever works. It isn't about ego. It's about whatever works. And so we trained in a lot of different stuff and and... Like before I got to go to Gene and Gokes, because it was Gokor School. It's the highest on Academy. And Sensei Gene was known as Uncle Gene. And Sensei would teach technical on Monday nights. And because Gene was a legend in the Hollywood film industry, you would have all kinds of people come through. You know, like one night I got to have Rowdy Roddy Piper as my grappling partner. Uh, another night I'm there oh, wow. with uh, Tricky from Massive Attack which I'm a huge fan of that band and I'm a fan of tricky solo work or another night you're in there and the dude that's leading the class is Christian Bale's stunt, uh, stunt double from the Batman films and helped invent the gun kata from equilibrium, which is a really neat little gun martial arts. Thing oh, they came cool. up with. That is cool. And uh, in L uh, in Champaign, Illinois, where I first started training, I was lucky enough to train with Sung Lee who is a professor in political science and he was from the Korean army demonstration team. So I started training in Taekwondo with him uh, and his school. And part of our training partners were several of the gentlemen from the very first American Taekwondo team for the Olympics. And so I got to train with them. I got to train with the Ho brothers. If anybody has seen the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, live action film they were two of the dudes in the suits doing the stunts and they were twins and uh funny thing, they were like they were like engineers <laughs> so i got to train with the ho brothers and they were wushu masters and my taekwondo school was a military form of the martial art so it was pretty nasty and then when i got out to la uh my my friend well my brother started uh managing a go-go bar the Hollywood a go-go 
in uh, Burbank. And so one of the guys there was an Armenian dude and he knew Gokar. And so my brother and Tony, uh, Armenian Superman, they started training at Gokars. And they were training there for, I think, about a year before Adam brought me over there, my little brother, Adam. And so I started training there in like 1976 or 1996, not 76, 96, 96. And the great thing about training at Gokorn Jeans is they just, you never knew what, what kind of artist you were going to get. Like one night we're there and it's, it's the German Olympic judo team is teaching us. Another night you walk in the door and it's the man who's in charge of training all of the bodyguards for the president of France. Then another night you walk in there and it's, at this time, it was Rhonda's mother, Anne Maria de Mars, but it was before anybody had heard of Rhonda. It was before Rhonda became Rhonda, you know, and I'm in the office and I'm just there to, hey, Sensei Jean, how you doing? Hey, go, what's up? And it's my voice on the answer machine for boxing. Paul Bullion, press 103, 103 for Paul <laughs> Bullion, boxing. And so I had to learn how to get all those Armenian names right because you you want to honor the guys and you want to get their names right, you know. Uh, for judo, Gene the Bell, press 105. And so uh, that's how I met Anne Maria, <laughs> and then uh, we became friends. And and you 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 had you just martial arts culture is is really something else. And you get to meet so many people and get so many friendships. And I would say that my hats off to Gokor because uh, me and Gok were uh, a lot more friendly than than Gene was you know, and I got to live out so many martial arts dreams uh, being there. I got to get kicked in the face by Bill Superfoot Wallace. If you've ever seen nice. Chuck Norris, a force of one. Uh, so I, I got to get kicked in the face by Bill Superfoot Wallace over at Co-Course. You know what I mean? That was awesome. I love that. <laughs> it was fucking great. Um, stuff like that was, was fantastic or, or being at the, uh, the Gene the Bell roast, and I'm standing there with my late wife, Wakako, and I'm standing there with Henry from Car Wash, but a lot of people know him from his stunt work in the various Die Hard movies and such, or The Last Action Hero. And then I'm also drinking with uh, the villainous actor from uh, uh, the Burt Reynolds, Warren Beatty film, uh, Deliverance. Now, why don't you just drop them pants? You've got a mighty purty mouth, boy. You got a mouth like a 13 <laughs> year old girl. And so I'm drinking with him, and I'm drinking with the villain yeah, from Enter the lips. Dragon, the guy who rapes Bruce, Wee Bruce Lee's sister in Enter the Dragon. And I'm just there, just having drinks with everybody, hanging with all the other bad guys. <laughs> that was pretty fantastic. Uh, that's pretty fascinating. Well, it sounds like they had an openness to uh, a lot of different approaches what i was going to ask is what you know what was the basic curriculum like was it primarily like judo with the gi or to be honest did they with have, you uh, there wasn't you know, a no basic gi curriculum. nights or more of a focus on submissions you would come in and okay basically you learned you learn new moves every every class and there wasn't a lot of it was kind of a professional fighters dojo so you kind of needed to know something before you got in there you didn't want to go there and, and not be prepped, you know, like uh, there's a school in uh, California. These are Brazilian jujitsu guys, the Machado brothers. And I think some of the people I knew in the film industry trained with the Machados and they're top flight, top to great, great fucking school. But they would warn their students that if you went to go course, be careful. It was a much rougher dojo. You know what I mean? It was way rougher and it was definitely a mm. fight dojo. It was not McRibs. It was fight dojo and injuries happen. Things happen when you play at that level. Uh, so your curriculum, well, the, the real curriculum was you had to warm up. I mean, you, you'd show up to class and you'd want to get there a good 10, 15 minutes early so you could get into your, your, it, it was up to you whether you wore a full judo gi or maybe you just wanted to wear, uh, I don't know, fight pants and no shirt. Or maybe you want to wear a T-shirt and sweatpants. Uh, like a lot of guys would train. They would wear socks to keep themselves from getting mat burn. And I, I didn't like that. I, I, so I didn't wear I didn't wear the socks and stuff. Uh, 
but you would you would be warming up. That was the to me the curriculum was you had to warm up and you had to you would start every class with practicing falls. And it's it's a gym and we'd be running laps around the gym. We'd be doing uh, exercises and warming up and stretching out. Now you gotta do forward rolls all the way across. Jump up, come run around, do it again. Jump up, come run around, do it again. Okay, now we're gonna do this arm slaps, this arm slaps, then it's the right arm slaps. Okay, now we're gonna go backwards. Now we're gonna go backwards. Now you're gonna go jump over three guys and and do your forward roll that way. And so th- to me, that curriculum was the thing that was standard because once you were warmed up, all right, guys, light up. They would introduce whatever luminary was there or whoever was new to the class. And then, you know, they'd start teaching you moves. And they'd have a one of the guys, you know, South Korean test pilot, get out here. And they would come out and you'd have a guy where they demonstrate the move on you or on the guy in front of the class. And then they'd say, all right, who wants to feel this? Because part of the instruction that I thought was actually really important is how can you do the move right if you haven't felt it? How are you going to get the choke right or the heel hook right sure. or that arm bar unless you felt it? And how are you going to keep from injuring your partner if you don't know how far is too far? So that was always great. So you would volunteer. Oh, I want to feel this, Sensei Gene. And you'd go out there and you'd do it. And then, okay, guys, break up with partners. And then you would go with your partner and you would drill the move. And there were guys that they didn't really want to do the drills. They just wanted to fight. But the serious guys were drilling the moves. Like one of my one of my training partners was uh, a SWAT guy, and he trained all the other SWAT guys in LA how to fight, and he executed a ton of high risk warrants. So when I was practicing the technique with with Rui, dude, who better? You know, who better are you going to practice with? You know, or another one of the senseis, uh, Sensei George. He uh, was a correctional officer at Bakersfield, and he'd been doing it a long time. So if you're going to learn these moves, you better learn it from somebody who really had to know it. You better learn from somebody who had to know it for real, or they're going to get their eye gouged out, or they're going to fucking lose a fucking tooth, or get choked or killed. And so that that was a murderer's row to train with, but also lovely. So many funny people like Benny the Jet or Kidez. I got to get to know Benny and train with Benny and that was awesome. I love, I love Benny. I love Gene. I love Gokor. All the instructors there were so fantastic. All the different talent that came through there. All the guys like Manny Gamburian, a real great guy, uh, Carl Parisian, you know, uh, Rhonda. It was really great to see Rhonda blow up, like to see like her go from nothing to wow. Like to really see that from the inside was intense. But I saw that too because, like, I knew Brian Polito in Chaos before there was a Chaos. I knew Billy Tucci before there was Crusade Comics. So I've been able to see what you could build. And at the end of the day, it comes back to your training, the effort you put into it, avoid the bullshit drama, make good comics, make a good movie. Okay, look, there's a reason why people are still talking about my Dahmer books 30 years later. They're not talking about that Dark Angel Marvel UK book. Nobody gives a fuck about that. Nobody knows what the fuck that was. No one's talking about Marvel's Omega Latino character from 1978. They're not talking about that. But they are talking about Lobo still. You know? Uh, Build a Bull is still a thing. It's a thing. And so that's the only way you're going to stand the test of time is to do good work. And you better be excited about it. If you fucking hate it, man, how can you expect anybody else to get thrilled about it? Honestly, how could you been, you know, I've known Billy a long time. I've known his wife and, or like David Mack from Kabuki, Kabuki, you know, David was serious about what he was doing. And, and the thing about artists and this notion of like, oh, how dare you critique another artist? You don't know artists because they're savages. Artists are savages. I can remember one of my buddies, Dimitri, going up and teasing Linsner at shows like, man, your work is all colored pencils and markers, man. It's going to fade. It's all going to fade out, man. Because he was Greek. <laughs> he was from Chicago, you know. Man, it's going to fade. And artists would all <laughs> fuck with each other. You know, they would. 
like when Jim Ballant accidentally got all hot and bothered over a trans a trans person dressed as Catwoman. And he was all into it. This is from the New York uh, Big Apple cons in like the late 90s, early 2000s. And Jim Ballant uh, was all over this Catwoman until he found out that Catwoman had a cat penis. <laughs> so <funny. laughs> I haven't heard that story. Oh, my God. <laughs> but the Booth girls, the Booth babes will always bring them in. Well, that was a fan. That was a fan who showed up. There's some photographs of me and Joe Monk's with that person sitting on our laps only uh he had come back and dragged the next year's storm and looked pretty good uh oh what's going over range, there man. you're okay. good too you're you're Cat fading out on me your, your picture's breaking up you okay yes is it fun hearing these stories? Because I, I don't yes, think anybody else hearing. is telling these comic here? book stories. <laughs> of course, it's all good to hear that. Well, well, if um, if I'm having trouble with the uh, the recording, then we'll go ahead and wrap this segment up. You can bring it home, tell everybody where to go to check out Boneyard Press. Make sure they get that pre-order in for uh, the Jeffrey Dahmer unauthorized biography. Yeah, you know, we did a test with uh, Amazon, like uh, as printing, and they had a hard time with uh, something to do with like they were trying to register some of the artwork as text, you know. So we weren't really happy with the print work we were getting from Amazon on the graphics. So we got a variant that uh, Psychotoxin Press was releasing, and I've got my books, and we're going to. Oh, there we go. Now all of a sudden, you look a lot better. Uh, I'm going through Comics Wellspring. Uh, my buddy Max over at Atrocity, he's been doing all his printing through them. And I've been taking a look at their, and I, I like the Atrocity books. They're, they're really good. I think he's doing classic bad girl books. As I call them, upskirt shots. Upskirt shots. <laughs> you know, uh, he's doing that classic sexy stuff. And man, you know, uh, I'm also happy too for uh, Linsner. It's really good to see Joe Linsner out there, like really producing great work. You know, because he got a knock for a long time about not making deadlines. And, man, I'm completely blown away at his output, the quality of his output, the positivity of what he's doing. Uh, for me, if you want to find out what I'm about, AmericanHorrors.net is the best place because the Boneyard books are up there. I highly recommend the Boneyard Mystery Box. I also recommend getting your order in for the Big Book of Dolmer. Um, I got something special for people uh, on their orders. And we're right now going through the proofing process. So books are going to ship. We printed an American horror story last summer, which is my true crime memoir. And it's about my girlfriend's murder. It's about uh, being on these talk show ambushes. And it's about some of my madness from those days. And so if you want to read an insane James O'Barr kind of true crime book from the bowels of outlaw comics, definitely get an American horror story. And then I would also recommend getting Poems for the Dead. Poems for the Dead is my first collection of poetry. We've gone through two different printings of it. One printing was through Boneyard. The other was through Chaos. And now it's for the first time ever in hardcover. And so it's a new hardcover edition, signed and numbered, only 150 copies. I'm signing every book. That's another great one. I, I actually highly recommend the triple pack. I think they all work together. They're all around the same timeline of what I'm dealing with. And I think that an American Horror Story and Poems for the Dead give a good flip side to the Dahmer book. Because all this stuff was happening behind the scenes when the Dahmer book hit. And I'm doing the talk shows and stuff. So if you want to see what it's like, I really, I really think that's the good three pack. And we've got the classic, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer bio cover. Um, we've got the variant covers. If you want to get the Jeffrey Dahmer versus Jesus Christ wraparound cover as seen, but slightly altered on Netflix's special Dahmer, um, you could get that too. And I'd say definitely get these orders in there because I mentioned earlier in the show that I just discovered a crack in my freaking windshield and I need to sell a bunch of books because I got to get the crack in the windshield fucking fixed. It's always goddamn something for, for the love of God, help me fucking fix my windshield. Please, please help me. This is how we make our money selling comics guys 
or advertise on American Horrors. Uh, that's another good one that I would really recommend to people in this age of social media censoring, of shadow banning. Uh, if you want to reach a direct audience, we found that American Horrors, uh, we've had the thing that's really surprised me is the people that have been advertising with us, they're writers and publishers, and they've been doing their own crowdfunding campaigns, and we've been getting great feedback. Uh, one author of a book called The Black Scorpion, he's like, Art, the day my ad went on your network, I started getting sales, and it lasted for about the first two weeks because he bought up like a month, and I, I think it kind of works better to hit and run. Like, get your promo in there for about two weeks straight, blast it, take a break, come back and blast another two weeks. That's the kind of stuff I've seen work best. So right when people are getting kind of tired of your ad or your promo, uh, and they're going to see it. It's not It's not like a doom scroll. It's not like your girlfriend going through her Facebook news feed and just, wee, wee, what are we doing, a jackpot? Are we aces? Are we jokers? What's going on here? Don't pull the handle again. I didn't even see it stop spitting. Jesus. We, uh, people are actually going to see your ad and our, our advertisement rates are really reasonable and it's a great way to build up your identity, your brand identity to an audience that loves horror, that loves horror, that loves comic books, that loves writing, that loves physical products and physical media. And I would say anybody who wants to advertise at American Horrors, you should definitely hit me up because, uh, we relaunched the network last year and we've firmed it all up. And man, it thinks it's it's running good. It's running really good. End of rant. Well, where is the main landing page for Bone Yard Press so people can it's go gonna be to, at American uh, Hours to pre-order all have of this? Where do they websites? go on the internet? Uh, we're about to uh, we're revamping the website for AmericanHorrors.net, and we did have BoneyardPress2020.com, but it took. I'm behind on deadlines. I'm way behind. And so I'm just like, nah, we got to take care of this other stuff. We got to like get it all under one umbrella. So the American Horrors Film Festival, that's another one. If you want to be part of the American Horrors Film Festival, uh, you can enter now at filmfreeway.com. The American Horrors Film Festival is the title. There's no spaces between the words. And so we're taking entries right now for the film fest and that's that's a lot of fun. That's going to be October 4th, 5th, and 6th in downtown Lake Geneva at the Grapevine Theater. And Lake Geneva is a beautiful, beautiful town. If you haven't been out here, you should. The lake is gorgeous. There's good food out here. There's a lot of fun people. Just be careful at the bar because it's a heavy pour in Wisconsin. <laughs> and those police officers are out in force. So <laughs> I would recommend that anybody who comes to Lake Geneva be careful with the drinking and driving. Uh, the police are out there. You want to be careful. Uh, you do not want to spend your vacation weekend dealing with a DUI. So drink responsibly, says Hart Fisher from Boneyard Press at American Hollers. There you go. Sounds good. And of course, you can find Hart D. Fisher all over the Internet, whether it's Facebook, X Twitter. I'm sure you're on a few other of the uh, the apps. I'm on X.com. I'm up there as uh, well, Hart D. Fisher. I'm on Instagram. Hart D. Fisher, I think it is. Uh, but if you go to my Instagram, be careful. There's some shots of my ass on there. So be forewarned, trigger warning, the, there's some <laughs> naked making bacon shots. So there's some butt shots on there. If you're a fan of Roadhouse and uh, what's his name, Connor's butt shot, you're going to get the same thing. <sighs> so I just have to warn people, if you go to my Instagram, watch out for my butt. All right. So you have been fore, forewarned and forearmed. So thank you very much for joining us, Hart. You've been more than generous. 